Greetings, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, um, I hope to show some demonstrations of standing waves and their applications with respect to uh, wave behavior, not only in strings, but in anything that um, sound can travel through with a medium. Um, that's the example I have here. So um, if you've watched the uh, Nigel Stainford video, um, a lot of those demos I could have at school, um, but can't, I'm not allowed to go into school um, to show them. So I, I hope you, you enjoy it. I'm gonna try to go back and forth between the different videos um, using this wave FET uh, demonstration. So to go into what standing wave pattern or resonance ends up being, you'll hear that term a lot, resonance, for you to hear things. So if I start off with a pulse, when the pulse hits a reflects off a boundary it inverts phase if the boundary is a um, more rigid boundary if i have waves interacting with each other you know if they're in phase the amplitudes get smaller they have a destructive interference if those um let's see let me make a new loose end here and restart this and if they are oops <laughs> If they're uh, in phase with each other, you notice that here the amplitude, every once in a while, the amplitudes will get larger if they're in phase, and they'll get smaller if they if they come out of phase with each other. Um, standing waves is a particular pattern that occurs when you have waves that continuously interact with each other. So I'm going to change this to oscillate, and just to make it quick, I'm just going to change it to three. So the waves are bouncing back and forth. They're constructively inter, um, interacting now. So the amplitudes get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they get somewhat out of phase. They're not exactly in phase. So eventually you get to a point here, destructive interference there momentarily when it was flat. If it was sound wave, here it would be getting louder. And then as the amplitudes are getting smaller, it would be getting softer and smaller and softer. And then no sound if it's flat like that. So this is somewhat chaotic, but you do see a pattern um, showing up every once in a while with the waves being in phase you get this constructive interference and the amplitude gets bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, a crazy example of that that you know, classic example of this is known as the um, galloping gertie which was a bridge uh, gertie was a bridge over the tacoma narrows um, where Kind of like a, a narrow between a couple of hills and the wind would come in um, and basically interact with the bridge and the bridge would sway back and forth with the wind and eventually it would just keep getting you know constructively interfere and um, the wave would get bigger and bigger and bigger concrete can act as a wave so you can kind of see this kind of going back and forth and it eventually gets to the point where the concrete can't keep itself together um, so that's a fun little video. You don't want this to happen to a bridge. Um, they learn from this. Uh, if you watch the whole thing, there's like cars on the bridge and stuff like that. It would have been cool to watch uh, um, and so forth. Um, some other demos that they showed um, in the video was the standing wave pattern. Uh, this was the demonstration instructor that went through um, a demonstration. So if I want to go looking at this one where basically a string was vibrating back and forth. Single like a single single pulse. You see like half a wave going um, between the two. An example of that would be the guitar string. You know, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but if I it's it's fixed between two points here on the bridge and here at the top. Um, it kind of has a, a fixed point, fixed um, node here and a fixed node at the bottom. When you pluck it, the string goes back and forth very rapidly. And it makes like that kind of uh, pattern. But along with that pattern, it makes other patterns, the second and third harmonics. So strings give uh, multiple harmonics that gives them their quality of sound. So it goes back and forth. If I change the length of the string in half by putting my finger halfway through you get up you still get that pattern going back and forth but the much shorter pattern the length of the string vibrating is shorter 
the wavelength is shorter, and when the wavelength goes down, the frequency goes up. So you hear a higher pitch. We'll talk more about sound, I hope, next week, but I don't know how far we're going to get. But this this pattern that they're showing here, the single wave, well, I'm sorry, half a wave kind of reflecting back and forth, creating a, a standing wave pattern going up and down, um, is, you know, can be shown easily on a guitar string. Right things like that, but we go sound, we'll, I'll, I'll come up with something a little better. If I use this um, wave, I'm going to, give me a second. I have this set up at a frequency of 0.44 hertz. I'm not crazy about it. whatever they did when they, whoever designed this applet, brilliant to begin with, but um, it doesn't allow for like really nice values. It's really, from what I figured out, it's somewhere in between um, to get a, a really nice, um, simple situation. So this is about as close as I can get to a half wave pattern going back and forth where a string would be vibrating. It doesn't look very, very, oops, that's place to stop. Let me stop right there. So there's an entire half wave. You maybe stop it a little smaller there. That's a little better. So if you imagine if your wavelength starting down here, going there, and then continuing on, if it could, it would kind of go like this. So this is basically half a wave. And it can create a, a standing wave pattern where it just looks like it's oscillating up and down, but really it's a wave traveling and then reflecting back upon itself. And if it's in sync properly, you can see that the amplitude keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there, the waves are somewhat in sync, but somewhat out of sync because it ends up getting smaller over time. Um, if I was to double the frequency, 0.87, not quite double because I said, you know, before that this this applet's not set up to give perfect behavior, you know, ideal behavior. Um, so I'm going to play, and now you can kind of see that's that's if you I freeze, it's going to look kind of ugly. Yeah, not too bad. There's an entire wave crest to trough with um, doubling the frequency. The um, wavelength is now increased by a factor of two. Um, so let's see now if I go for doubling again, okay, so I've increased it up to 1.74. So now when I, I, I run this and let me see if I can freeze it right, eh, almost. So there's a wave from here to there and then another wave. So this is, ends up being two waves. This would be another harmonic, a multiple of the the fundamental, um, some examples of that. You played a flute or I have different length tubes. Here's a short one and some longer ones. So a short one, high pitch, short length, high frequency, uh, longer one, lower pitch, because it's a longer wavelength. This type of behavior occurring in these tubes. Um, Basically, when the air goes in, there's a pressure difference, um, creates a compression here, and there's a pattern that sets up inside the, the tube to create the pitch that you hear. So you can have different length tubes. And you have different pitches that go along. Again, you know, if we have more time, we'll go more into that um, in the video. There was a couple of demonstrations that were kind of show this. So this shows uh, um, constructive interference, high amplitude, high amplitude. Um, so like in the Rubens tube, here would be the, the high amplitude, the high amplitude, uh, the crest. And, and, you know, so this gives you basically the wavelength and the wavelength corresponds to a specific frequency. So when he's playing. You have different amplitudes being set up at different places. Um, it's just so cool. I just love to watch it. Um, but the different notes create patterns. And that's what you're seeing throughout the video is the different patterns, especially the, the little plates the um, that, that you'll see the, with, with um, grains on it that the plate will vibrate in a certain pattern based upon the frequency that's hitting it. And um, that pattern will show up as a shape. Um, the guitar body inside 
when you play a, a chord or whatever. <laughs> inside, if you can take pictures of it, a, a, a standing wave pattern, a pattern would also occur inside the guitar. And you can look those up. It's really, really interesting, the, the, the study of acoustics and physics. Um, Okay, so let's get to the assignment. Hopefully that's enough for the background to, to get started right now. So there's all these links that are on Schoology that, you know, to, uh, here's the standing wave demo with the instructor showing the string generator. Um, this one goes into an explanation if you're a musician, um, you play a stringed instrument, curious about how frequencies and length correspond to the different pitches and the different combinations of sound, the consonants that you hear, the, uh, the quality of the harmonics combining together. Um, kind of goes into a little of that. Um, here's the, the galloping gurdy, the bridge that kind of goes crazy. Um, this is that uh, music video um, that um, I really liked. And here's the applet. And we've been using that already. So with using the applet, if I look at this situation here, with standing waves, the points on the string that don't really move are called nodes. So that would be like here, 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 here and here. Anti-nodes are points on the string that go through that constructive interference that you see back and forth. Nodes are destructive interference points, points on the string that don't move. And you won't see that happening exactly here. It's better in the, the physics gener uh, demo with the, st the real string that you can see the points. He actually holds them in different places and the string doesn't move. Here, because it's not an exact spot, there's going to be constructive and destructive interference and the patterns will continually be will change. It'll be chaotic. Uh, and sometimes that's cool. I like to see that. It makes it, it does make it interesting, but it makes it more difficult to talk about the physics behind it. So um, as this is moving, these are the anti-nodes, so are the points that are moving up and down. The nodal points, and every once in a while you'll see a point, ah, there it was, where, yeah, now it's common in the destructive behavior, there, right there, didn't move for a moment. So you'd have to kind of get that at a spot where it's not moving. So that would be your your nodal points or points on a wave that don't move. Anti-nodal points are, are uh, points on the wave that go through that entire swing. But, you know, again, this is a wave that's going down, reflecting back, and interacting. And it just looks like it's basically just going up and down. But that's not really what's happening. Just don't see it with your eye like it kind of does now. So um, that's a little bit on standing waves. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos and some of the background information. Um, it should be pretty straightforward to, to fill out. You're filling out the um, node and anti-node and, and, and try these values. So uh, when you do the snapshots and st stuff like that, um, give it a couple, ch couple shots. So like this one should be two waves. That's not a good place to start it. So um, try to, Get it going, uh, destructive interference. That looks like it's going pretty decent pattern. And, you know, try your best. There, that would be good enough. You know, you don't have to have the crest at the first one. This shows the trough first, but this shows one, two waves. So take a quick snapshot, stick it in, put it on Schoology, and you are now a standing wave expert. Go around the house, find different tubes. Now here's a, oh, it's a closed tube. <laughs> it has its, its own little pitch to it. That's another thing I forgot to do. By putting my hand over the tube, I've also changed the pitch. So I've changed the pattern uh, between a closed tube and an open tube. So there's a lot of really cool stuff with waves and sound um, that, that work together. And standing waves and resonance work together to give you everything you hear. Thanks and have a great day.